Hey everyone. Today in this episode of Dorks Egg Cookies, we're going to be reviewing the Cosmic Terrors. And other than looking really super cool, we're going to be talking about the strategies of what do they bring to your Cthulhu Wars game. And uh, depending on your preferred factions, what do they, uh, how do they slide into your strategies? All right, everyone. So in this episode, I know it's been kind of a week since a, like a real episode. I'm going to be doing these strategy guides every two weeks so that I can spend more time giving you higher quality. And then uh, I'll be sprinkling a lot of like gameplay and box opening videos uh, on the other weeks. So just real quick heads up there. So um, also I want to give you a quick, quick shout out guys. Sorry. Uh, I'll get right to it. But I want to give you a quick shout out to our Twitch channel. We're streaming live on Sundays over on Twitch, Dorkside Gaming. And that's going to be us playing these games. We post these here on Mondays. Uh, but if you want to catch us live and join the conversation, you can join us over there, Dorkside Gaming. Uh, and now let's get to it. So Cosmic Terrors. I'll, I'll admit at first, I kind of thought these were neutral monsters but they're not. They're a new type of entity called the Terrors. And what that allows um, Sandy Peterson to do is he can basically introduce these types of creatures that are more powerful. Like, right, there's a, there's a pecking order. They're more powerful than monsters, but not as powerful as great old ones. So, Things that say, like, uh, sleeper faction capture monster, that doesn't work on a cosmic terror. On the other hand, some things that might be like minus one cost for monsters or something, um, isn't quite something like that, but you know, you get the idea. That does not make the cosmic terrors cheaper. So, uh, how do you take control of them? Uh, cosmic terrors are, you pay two doom and two power and you take control of this one entity. Each of the ones that I have in this expansion, this is the Cosmic Terrors box. Uh, I, do I have another one? I don't know. I think there's another Cosmic Terrors box, but uh, the Cosmic Terrors don't, uh, don't come in multi-packs. It's not like, a lot of the neutral monsters are like two or three of any given neutral monster. These seem to be individual entities. So in this pack, we're going to be covering the Great Race of Yit, uh, Quacha Udas, and the Dull. And, I mean, look at this thing. It gives Cthulhu a run for the money. I love the Dull. Every game that, if you play Call of Cthulhu, the living card game, all the games. Uh, I can talk about other publishers because I'm not sponsored by anybody. So, <laughs> the Dull is always cool, and it's big. It's just... I don't know, it looks kind of like Tremors in this, this particular version, and it reminds me of a purple worm from D&D, which, I mean, purple worms in D&D are like Tarasks or um, the other like big mega creatures, and it's always like, man, I hope, it, I hope our campaign has us facing one of these big mega worms. And there, there you go, Dol, super cool. It, it just feels massive. It feels good to have this many. All right, but let's go into the Great Race of Yith. So the Great Race of Yith, um, <laughs> this, this figure is a very weird thing. It, uh, it has eyeballs in the top on a stalk. It has a weird mouth thing. They kind of, I don't know, it's just weird. But what's cool about them is that they have a weapon, an advanced sci-fi type of weapon. They're supposed to be super advanced and uh, there's some pretty cool stories involving the Great Race of Yith. So uh, totally, uh, I'll try to link down below some of the, some of the um, I think Shatter Out of Time, something like, something like that. Uh, super cool race. And uh, I just think it's cool. I wish it had something to represent its science fiction technology weapons. But 
Uh, yeah, I like it because you don't. You mostly you see weird, well, weird squid monster things, but uh, in this case, you actually see a science fiction type weapon, and uh, I just like it. Okay, so what does it say? Pay to doom and to power to obtain this loyalty card. Uh, this is just like all cosmic terrors, and then you place it at your control gate. So you take control of it. Um, you have to do this during your doom phase. So uh, you can only control one of these cosmic terrors per doom phase, and that means that you you can't take all of them, like even if you could afford it. So okay, that's important to, to point out. All right, they are cost four and combat three. I I really like most of these creatures because the first go, like if you take control of the second turn. Um, you you probably have the two doom and that means that you have a kind of a more powerful creature to start with now if it dies it's going to cost four from that point forward but uh, yeah i think it's nice now uh it's combat three so a pretty respectable combat dice i mean that's some of the most powerful monsters uh combat three and it comes with a built-in special ability. And this is interesting, it's both ongoing and takes place during the gather power phase. So uh, what it's effectively doing is one, it can capture enemy cultists regardless of the presence of enemy monsters, uh, enemy cosmic terrors, or great old ones. So uh, Uncle Yith, as they call him sometimes, <laughs> He trumps everybody, including Windwalker's Ferex ability, so he can always capture uh, cultists. Then, uh, if he is in play during the Gather Power phase, you earn one power per captured cultist in addition to your normal award of one power. So, <laughs> if you take control of a normal Cthulhu cultist, or you capture one, then during the gather power phase, you get one power for having controlled a Cthulhu cultist, or captured a Cthulhu cultist. You also get one power from the great race of Yith. On the other hand, if you take control of a cultist like Yellow Sign, who normally you get zero power for, taking, for capturing that cultist, uh, in this case, you just get one, so that's that's important. It makes other factions not as immune to being captured, which is kind of the whole point. All right, so let's go through the factions. Who wants Uncle Yith? Great Cthulhu. Does he want it? I think so, because the thing about Uncle Yith is you want to get to an enemy and then you want to capture an enemy and i think cthulhu using submerge he's going to have a lot of opportunities that when he pops out from wherever he goes he's going to bring uncle yit who has combat dice which is good and it also is going to give you an opportunity to capture a um, cultist Possibly. Now, after you get six spell books, of course, you're going to have uh, other options like um, appearing and attacking as opposed to just appearing and then waiting. But still, I think it, I think it can be a good opportunity to help him travel around. Other than that, uh, capturing cultists is not a huge part of Cthulhu's options, right? Because Normally, you kind of like you evolve and you dreams. So, I I think I think yes. I think he's a good asset. Three combat dice. That's nice. Um, yeah. All right. Crawling chaos. So I like crawling chaos with uh, the great race of Yith because uh, when crawling chaos controls him, he gets the ability to fly. That means that you're going to look over the entire world and any location that has a vulnerable cultist now becomes a, 
a possible target of the Great Race of Yet. I think it's a good addition. And the other thing is that Kron Chaos, I often feel power starved. So uh, this does give you an opportunity to possibly get some more power every turn. Uh, yeah, so I think it's a good combination. All right, the Black Goat. Do they need Great Race of Yet? Now, often, I feel like the Black Goat, as much as I hate them, it's only because of how well balanced they are. They don't need help. They don't need neutral spell books. They don't need neutral monsters. Most of them, they just don't need things. But you combine the Great Race of Yit with Avatar and have the Shub Niggurath just sort of hopping back and forth, I think it's really nice. Uh, you can Avatar around different places, and if you do it right, you're sending the enemy cultist back to be captured by the Great Race of Yit, and that's just giving you more power. Black Goat is already power heavy. They get the Dark Young power, they get additional gates from having the Dark Young, they uh, generally, with Avatar, have an easy ability to capture gates. It's, they already get a lot of power, and if they can feed remote cultists back to the great race of Yith, it's just, it's just gravy. Like that is a, that's a great combination. I really like it. I think that uh, it's, it's one of the best use cases for a great race of Yith, in my opinion. Yellow sign. I love yellow sign. Um, yellow sign also rarely needs or wants external things. Again, in this case, I don't think they want the Great Race of Yith. They don't want them, and they don't really care about them. I think that, uh, in my opinion, Yellow Sign is all about desecrating. You're all about moving around. And there, in my play strategy with Yellow Sign, I don't really have a lot of opportunities to be paying the cost for Great Race of Yith to be wandering around capturing cultists. And uh, they're also less... less vulnerable to it. In the end, I don't I don't see it. I don't really... Uh, you could be turning cultists into undead and then uh, bring Great Race of Yith in. You could be still in gates and stuff. If, if you're a more aggressive playstyle, maybe, but uh, I don't like it. It's just not how I play Yellow Sign. Uh, I'm curious if, if some of you play a more aggressive Yellow Sign. Uh, and if you do, uh, how does that work for you? Do <laughs> you feel like it helps you win or not? All right, uh, let's go ahead and go on to Opener of the Way. So, Great Race of Yith are not monsters. And uh, on, a, on one hand, Opener of the Way kind of have their own thing going on. On the other, uh, Great Race of Yith. It costs the same as a Spawn of Yogg-Sothoth. It has the same combat dice as a Spawn of Yogg-Sothoth, but you also get um, that bonus power from capturing things, whereas Spawn of Yogg-Sothoth only helps for Dread Curse of Az Azathoth, and uh, of course allows you to awaken Yogg-Sothoth. So I think, uh, I think Great Race of Yith is a good addition. Um, I I don't often capture cultists with Great Race of Yet or with Opener of the Way, but I play kind of an aggressive opener. So for me, Yet works. I've never combined them that way, but it works for me. I would uh, if Yet was available in a game I was playing opener, I would I would get Yet because. Uh, Mostly because it's equivalent to another spawn. And uh, opener is combat heavy. They don't get elders uh, they don't get elder elder signs. So uh, you have to win in combat, so you really kinda need all the combat that you, you can get. And that might open you up to capture cultists. So alright. Cho Cho. Nope. Sorry, Chocho, you don't you don't get great recipient. 
uh, people aren't going to be moving cultists in, you don't have any good mobility powers, you're not a, a combat faction, you don't win that way, it doesn't help you to get the great race of you. Again, you are denied fun. Um, sorry, Jojo. I'm so sad for you lately. I can't wait to see what what the future holds for Jojo. I hope something cool happens. All right, Windwalker. Uh, Chocho, by the way, are uh, mildly resistant to uh, Great Race of Yid. So they also don't necessarily care if somebody else is running around with the uh, Great Race of Yid. But still. Yeah. Chocho. They don't participate. They're like the, they're like the kids who uh, in gym just kind of stand at one side and talk. That was me, guys. I stood at one side and talked instead of playing. Um, yeah, I was the cho-cho of, of gym class. Ah, all right, Windwalker. So, I love it. This is what I love. <laughs> With Windwalker, I often will form a large army and I move that army with Ithaqua. And what's great is you don't even have to attack. You can move into people's space and you can just gobble up their cultists and just say, hey, initiate combat. You spend the power to initiate combat if you want. I've got some Wendigo to scare some of your units away. Um, Heck, I might even have Rentega with me, who's immortal, and he's gonna soak up a kill. Do it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna gobble up your cultists and move on. I'm not even gonna take your gate. I like it. I think it's cool. Um, big problem with Great Race of Yith is you have to figure out how to get them where the cultists are. Uh, Ithical works. I like it. Sleeper. All right, so one, the um, the death from a uh, death from below unique ability normally puts out a, a monster, and eventually it starts putting out the relatively powerful formless spawn units for free. You don't get that with cosmic terrors, so you may be sort of not motivated to get cosmic terrors as sleeper. On the other hand, Sleeper, uh, or better to say, Sathakwa, has the ability to capture monsters. He doesn't have the ability to capture Cosmic Terrors. So if you take Cosmic Terrors, you're denying your enemies from having a unit immune to Sathakwa. I like that. Um, on the other hand, by having a wizard, you can capture a monster and then do combat. Or I mean, you can initiate combat and then using a wizard, do a capture action. So that can be pretty cool. You can have your army form a spawn, move and attack, but because you have great race of if you want to capture, go ahead and capture at the same time using your wizard free action. That's what wizards do is they get to give you an action at the beginning as a pre action. I think it's great. So um, I think sleeper's a big yes. I think I think I think it just gives you options. It's not vital, but I like it a lot. So that is the great race of Yid. Um, if you have any strategies, definitely post down below. Otherwise, uh, we'll move on to Quattro Vitas.